All righty. So welcome to the Prime Minister panel. I'm so excited because, do you know what? Probably in the last um, six years, six or seven years, I have interviewed over 500 potential Prime Ministers. Amazing, right? Amazing women. I love doing calls because it's like-minded sisters on the same mission. And the two things that most people say they always want to do is, one, talk to a real life prime lister, which is what we get the chance to do today. And the second one is to try products. And we get to do that on Friday, but not just try a product, actually try a recipe and a product, which is going to be very, very cool. So we are joined today by four real life prime listers who are all kind of multitasking and doing their, got their real life going on. So we're going to try and get in and out within 45 minutes. So we've got prime minister Pip, from Launceston, give us a wave, Pip, in Tasmania. There's Pip. We've got Prime Minister Mickey, who's at work in her other job, feeding all the children, giving us a wave there. She's in Sydney. We've got Prime Minister Melissa, who was my absolute saviour yesterday. Mwah, mwah, love you. <laughs> in Orange, in New South Wales. And we're also going to have Prime Minister Narrowly when she comes at some point. She's at school. She's a teacher. So she's sneaking into the store cupboard I think to put her apron on and come and join us at some point so that's very cool I really appreciate you all here she comes I really appreciate you all being here with us today so I really want to make this more about the questions that you've got because you heard me prattle on enough yesterday so what I'd love you to do is if you have a question for us just raise your hand hey Nerali welcome from WA so nice to see you give us a wave when you log on, there we go. <laughs> um, if you've got a question for our Prime Ministers, it can be anything at all. We haven't got anything scripted or rehearsed or practiced. Just put your hand up either um, in real life or in Zoom where you can just raise your hand and we'll get into some questions. But if we don't have any questions to start us off, what I'd love to do is just take turns to go around each of our real life Prime Ministers who interestingly all joined about a year ago right so we've got october september and august are the dates that these prime ministers joined which just as a coincidence and you know how yesterday we were saying imagine we were having this conversation 12 months from today and you're looking back at being a prime minister what would have had to happen for you to be happy with your results so you can actually hear from real life prime ministers and and hear how it's going for them all right so any questions to kick us off or shall we just roll into it don't be shy. Put your hand up if you have a question. No. All right. Okay. Well, who would like to start us off? I'd love to just know, uh, you know, tell us why you joined, how it's going, what your highlights have been, that kind of thing. Who'd like to start first? Oh, you can't hear anything narrowly. Um, maybe you need, oh, it keeps cutting out. Maybe it's crappy signal, unless anyone else, am I cutting out for anyone else? No, okay. Hmm. Hmm. Okay, well, let's, let's start with, Um. should we start with you, Nerali? Because I know you're on a, you're in like the school car park. Can you hear me? Uh, I'm not actually questions, I'm sorry. I Maybe pop in the chat and I can talk from that. Okay, cool. All right, let's do that. Um, okay, I'll just pop it in there. Tell, uh, I wish I could sign it to tell us about your Prime Minister experience. So, uh, don't you love technology? <laughs> okay. Hey. A little bit in and out, but we'll go with it. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. I've just said I'm sick at the moment. So um, the crowd making two months for you. Um, I joined um, a little a year ago and the absolute could have done. I am so 
based upon Hamilton and because it's me uh, in a teacher. I eat it community of like minded people. Just loving a pool. Um that conversations and um I've just uh, I, like I've had oh me come back out and I'll try coming. I'm so sorry. Like I just really felt like I could tell the essence of it was really lovely. Could you like oh the best thing I've done? But I could kind of get the essence of it, but not really. So um, if you wouldn't mind going out and coming back, I'm so sorry. But that sounded like it was going to be amazing. So Mickey, do you want to go next? Because I know you've got school dinners to um, tidy up from. Yep, I'll go. Um, yeah, so I, hang on, just turn down my radio because I can't add suits. Okay, so I, surprisingly enough, joined a year ago too and I didn't realise that it was already a year. And I said to my son, have we been doing this for a year already? He goes, yeah, ma. So, oh, my God, okay, great. <laughs> um, I was in a different place when I started and I have since then left this place and come back to the job that I had before COVID, which has enabled me to do this wholly like yeah and I have enjoyed every single step of the way my husband initially wasn't very supportive but um because he just I mean we've been with I've had my own business before and he knew what it was like to run it and it's very stressful and all that yada 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 and he said don't you think it's time to just calm down a bit I said no I've got the energy I want to do it you know so as it have it, um, he was really against me going to the markets, this, that, and the other. And the other day, my son couldn't come to the markets and my husband came and he was happy to be there. And I said, well, haven't the times changed? <laughs> you know, but no, I love it. I absolutely love every aspect of what I am doing, wholly, wholeheartedly. I don't sit down when I get home. I get straight back into the kitchen. I'm going to go from one, from one kitchen to the other. And it's just, it's the energy I have. Like, I wouldn't... I don't know what I would do without private alternative right now, to be honest with you. <laughs> you know, my customer um, orders are coming in like every day and I just feel like saying to my stockist especially, can you just close your doors for a second so I can just catch up? You know, it's, um, no, but it's good. It's great. It's just, it's flipping amazing. And the best thing for me as well, because my son's involved, he's only 20, but um, he's, he looks forward to the markets every week. He goes, Mum, what are we selling today? Like, you know, and he does my square reader. So I can't, I can't talk and do that at the same time. I'm just so not tech savvy. <laughs> the fact that I'm here is amazing, actually. <laughs> but, um, yeah, no, I've learned a lot, a lot about the food, a lot about um, how to use different alternative ingredients. And, I mean, this all started for me back at the childcare centre when I had children who couldn't eat this and couldn't eat that. And I just wanted them to enjoy what they could eat, you know. And it was just, it was amazing because I had positive feedback and they just said, oh, my gosh, when you're leaving, what are we going to do without you? And I said, well, you know, come to the markets and I'll feed you some final alternative goods. <laughs> no, but it's, it's great. I mean, I have not one bad thing to say about final alternatives until today. It's just, if you're going to do it, just... Please believe me, it's the best thing. And I, I'm saying this from the bottom of my heart. It's just, even my sister-in-law wants to do it, but she can't because she's got two little ones that, mum, mum, mum. So she can't. <laughs> yeah. Have I talked my head off yet? <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, I love it. I love it. And if you haven't looked on Instagram, um, Mickey's doing this uh, like a testimonial. I said, oh, look, you know, everyone doesn't want to hear from me all the time. Please can have some real life travelistas. Just do me a one minute thing for Instagram. And you, I love yours. You're like, I love the food. I love the people. I love everything. I just love it. It's just so good. It makes when I, if I'm having a bad day, I just watch that and it cheers me up. And also, <laughs> we've got really awesome um, family friends in Italy and um, friends that I've known since I was a pen pal when I was 10. Lorenzo he's oh, like wow. my Gemini brother and my mum and dad just went over to their 50th birthday party and my mum said I want to send them some primal alternative goodies so thank you Mickey for putting together a massive box 
of all our packet mixes and posted them to Italy for me. You can sell them anywhere in the world. That's amazing. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> I thought you were my the pleasure, one the job. My pleasure. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I feel honoured. I really do. I mean, I posted them yesterday and my son actually said, oh, my gosh, it went out. Did it really? I said, yeah, it's gone. He goes, yeah. do you ever stop? I said, no, but I can't stop. I, I just want to keep going because that the energy, the positive energy just flows through you. When you are doing what you love doing, it's not work anymore. It's a pleasure. Yeah. It's really, yeah. it's beautiful. It's beautiful. It. Thank you, <laughs> Mickey. Gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. <laughs> Thank you so much. Narrowly, let's let's try uh, your connection again. And meanwhile, if any questions are popping up for anyone, just raise your hand, do the little Zoom hand thing, and I'll we'll we'll take your questions, you know. Feel free to um to to chip in at any point. All right, take two. Fantastic. Well, hopefully everyone can hear me this time. We're Clear as a bell. <laughs> Good, good. Um, please excuse the noise in the background. I've got kids that are just, um, I'm a teacher and the kids are all running around having recess at the moment. So I'm hiding in my car while we chat. Um, and look, I just want to say how grateful I am that I stumbled across Primal Alternative. It was about a year ago now and um, I just thought, oh, this is the way I eat. This is exactly me. And I, I had no idea that Primal Alternative existed, um, but it has just been such an exciting experience. Not only is it the way that I, I actually eat, but it's the way that I want to promote to other people. And so it's just given me this incredible tool to help people out. I was just sitting in the staff room just then and a lady was talking about how she is working with a dietitian who has said, right, you need to be on low carb, you need to be on high protein, high fat. And I said, hey, how about I send you my link and let you know what I can offer because I, I've got all those sorts of things. And um, and she suffers from bloating and from um, yeah, sore gut. And I said, yes, that's exactly what I do. I'm able to help cater for wherever you're at and together we can come up with a solution so it's just I I love it I love the um uh, the the feeding of, of people but the community that that have um met as well it's just so special I've met gorgeous people and um uh, it's just such a privilege to be here and to be able to uh, do this and and I I marry it with my um my job so I teach little kids for two days a week and then I I get to uh, hang out with adults at the markets or with different customers um yeah and it just works beautifully with what I do awesome and I've heard some really nice uh reports as well narrowly from the Perth Primalistas, like meeting up with, um, I think it was Primalista Christy when she first yeah. was going to do her first tastings and she was all like a bag of nerves and she was like, oh, I'm so grateful to Narrowly for, you know, giving me some, <laughs> you know, just really easy tips of how to start a conversation like sweet or savoury, you know, or both, or oh, me too. Yeah. And then, you know, then it just starts flowing and it's easy. So that's really special as well. Yeah. So thank mm -hmm. you for doing that. Awesome. All right. Thank you. Again, any questions, don't be afraid to ask. Now, is there any of the prime listers that need to run off? Are we good? We're good. All right. Thank you, my little working prime listers and taking time out of your day to come and uh, join us today. Let's go to prime lister Melissa, who, who met Melissa yesterday when my internet dropped out. <laughs> <laughs> sorry <laughs> I was so cross I'm all that time awesome. it was like 10 minutes just looking at the thing going whoa well <laughs> but me, I thought everyone would have gone home and I was so upset and then Melissa was there she held the fort taking questions and what a legend so thank you that's all awesome. Jim <laughs> pleasure pleasure and I just, I, I, as I said intuitively I just knew I needed to get on so the op I had no idea that was going to happen but um, it was a situation that I thought, well, it's just, it's good when you, know, when you, when people ask you questions about things that you're already doing, you haven't, it's not like you haven't started yet or you haven't sort of launched. 
just the DPA, you actually in what they're inquiring about. Um, it just gives you that less standing of confidence that you just, you know, this is just me. This is what I do, and this, is, you know, and I'm completely happy doing it, you know. And it's just, it's really good. So when I had those questions yesterday, it was a no-brainer. You know, I was in there thinking, you know, normally I would have gone, oh my god, what would Helen have said? Oh my god, well, you know, have, have I got all the answers? Have I? And now today, Melissa's internet's crashed. <laughs> Are you back? <laughs> I don't know what happened to the. All of a sudden, it dropped out on me. It did. Yeah. So yeah. it's all good. Yes. Um. So you you just want to hear about my um, primal alternative journey so far? Yeah, go for it. it has been very smooth sailing. Um, I've even had a month off for my twentieth wedding anniversary, so that was really good. Um, I joined like late September, early October last year. Um, I'm, I sort of, it was really the right time for me because I'd actually looked at Primal Alternative five or six years ago and because we'd only just moved house, we had this really crappy little kitchen, like I'm talking really crappy little kitchen. Um, the day that we moved in, to give you an example, I actually walked in and, um, to take the keys off the agent. He said, I need you to do a final inspection and I went into the kitchen and I actually opened the doors and they fell off in my hands. So if that's any indication, and since then, I've actually had a completely new kitchen installed. So for me, the process of having the, the council of approval and all that sort of stuff was very streamlined because I'd already just had a kitchen installed. They already had it on file. They knew exactly what was going on. I didn't even have to have an inspection. It was all tick that box, jump that hoop, and it was five done, you know, hit the ground running. So, I mean, it can happen that way doesn't happen for everybody, but it can happen that way. Um, yeah, and, and it's funny because I've, I've learned so much about myself in this business too because when I first started, I was doing it for my husband for health reasons and more his than mine um, and was working through a lot of anxiety and things like that in trying to make sure that I was presenting everything the way other people would accept me. And I realised that, no, I'm, I'm doing this for me. This is all about my journey, my health, my enjoyment of connecting with other people. And as soon as I worked through that anxiety, which was, you know, a couple of months back now, but um, I'm having so much more fun. I'm having so much more fun. It's like the preparation of the loaves and, you know, and the baking of the loaves and the, and the cookies and everything. I, I can do it at my own pace. I can have my, my radio blaring. I can be in my PJs and my slippers if I want to. I can sing my heart out and don't really care what other people think. And, you know, I'm not have to answer to a boss. It's great. You know, so I'm in my happy space. I'm at, I'm at home in my happy space. I've got teen, like late teenage children, one of them being special needs. Um, so... I, you know, if if I'm able to get a batch on and take a, a child, you know, drop a child off to an appointment or, you know, whatever, whatever, I can do all that sort of stuff. It's great. It's so liberating to be able to have that income. And because I've got a weekly market, I have a virtually consistent weekly income now that I can rely on, that I can actually prove to, for example, we're in the process of... Um, renegotiating our mortgage um, to get a better rate and I can prove to the banks what that my can that my income is consistent and has been for quite a number of months you know so it's it's been really good I, I just think it's the fact that I've been able um, or getting back to the health journey my husband reversed type 2 diabetes um, I found that my um, my cholesterol has dropped, even though it's a familial cholesterol and I need to keep on tablets for it. I don't need to take as much. Um, I feel better. I sleep better. Um, and just just the community-mindedness of, of actually connecting with other people in the community that are having health issues as well and actually know that what I'm actually doing, not just selling, um, is such a, such a real connector, you know, and the, and the people that actually um, I do the market with are actually farmers. So 
they actually trade um, their their goods for things that I can actually sell to them. You know, which is great. So there's a lot of there's a lot of big bonuses there happening, um, and I really look forward to the, the markets every week because there's so many people coming and go. Oh my gosh, I you know, and they'll say, oh, "I forgot to put an order in this week. Have you got any of this left?" Or you got that? It's like, no, sorry, you're gonna have to put an order in. <laughs> you know, because I use the market as a little um, advertising platform, shall we say? And it, I'm trying to encourage more orders. So having said that, just getting it out there and, and just like um, Mickey said and Neroli said, just having that ability to connect with others on this sort of level with such good products and such professionalism and such presentation that you wouldn't have to do yourself. Like it, it really is the best business in the box. It really is. Hey, so, yeah, and that's me. Mel, tell us about, because you've had your own business before, you've been a hairdresser. And I know we've had a chat. Hairdresser um, for 30 years. Yeah. And you were telling me, you know, tell, you tell tell us about the difference between running that business versus having a big from home business. Oh, running a salon, staffing issues. Oh, my God. Like, and, and as much as everybody loves going to the hairdresser, from the hairdresser perspective for 30 years, dealing with people's vanity, um, no, nah, not for me anymore. Um, having, having said that, it's a situation that um, it's so much more stressful having a, having a salon. And I even had a mobile hairdressing business as well. Um, having those types of businesses versus staying here in your, in your happy space and just not having to worry about, you know, um, I'll just, just – Tint reactions and 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 perming things and have we got enough perming papers and have we got enough this that and the other? I mean, yes, you've got to look after your um, you know, your ingredients and all that sort of stuff. But it's a situation that you know, from a from making like you're going to be eating every day, aren't anyway, aren't you? So it's not like you have to have your hair tinted and blow dried and, and permed and coloured and all that sort of stuff every single day, you know, it's it's a situation that um, I just found dealing with the public on a vanity level versus dealing with the public on a health level, health level is so much more pleasant, so much more pleasant, you know. You're not dealing with the pressure of wedding days and makeup and, and, and you know, wedding parties and, and all that sort of stuff. That was a lot more stressful a lot more stressful than, you know. And the other thing too is the toxic fumes you get in salons. Like, you know, when you're looking at uh, hairsprays and tints and perms, the ammonia levels and all the toxic chemicals you're breathing in on a daily basis, you know, that is just not pleasant. So it's, you know, hands down, give me bacon home any day. I, just, <laughs> I really, as you can hear, I'm sounding a bit fluid at the moment. I've just gotten over four weeks of the flu so i'm still a bit throaty but yeah definitely oh. hands down give me bacon home thanks for this i remember as well you were telling me how nice it is to like be like that kind of like off stage you know like you're not having to be like chatter, 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 all the time with, with yes your, i mean it's lovely when you go to the market and it's great and you can have this amazing community immersion and you've got the banter with all the other stall holders but then when you, you don't want to do that every day you know so i don't know like i like days off where you just can be nice and quiet and no makeup and no brow and barefoot in the kitchen you know yes yes <laughs> yes, absolutely. Uh, for 30 years, I actually worked for several bosses that if you didn't have a full face of makeup on, you were not allowed in the salon. Yeah. That's just what, that's just part of what you had to do, you know? Yeah. And it's like, I haven't worn makeup for six years. It's great. I love it. <laughs> awesome thank be you real, be fresh yeah be real be fresh and put it on if you want it but you don't have to if you don't want it which is lovely I exactly. remember we, we had to wear um when I was working uh in corporate we had to wear hosiery we had to wear tights every day I hate that I hate that all right let's go over to Prime Minister Pip and I just want to just warn Prime Ministers not warn you but just give you a chance to think I'd love to talk about um when we come around all I'll just 
ask prime listers to answer questions if you've got anything to share on you know any business tips any production tips marketing is quite a big one that a lot of people worry about like how do you put yourself out there you know in a noisy marketplace without feeling like you're not being you so anything like that you've got to share um would be would be great um and also the bonus for showing up live today so this is only for people who are here now so hello uh, if you look in the chat, there's a link there to my business blueprint, which is actually a Primalista bonus. Um, so you normally only get that when you come on the inside, but I'm giving it away as a as a um, a prize or a gift today. And really, it's kind of going next level from what we did yesterday in the kind of rough business plan that you did. It's really like looking a bit more deeper in terms of visualizing what you want and then actually scheduling in what you need to do to get there. So very powerful tool. So print it off, fill it out. It's yours, my gift. And let's hear now from lovely Pip. Hello. Um, I actually joined about two years ago. Um, I'd heard of Primal Alternative a very long time ago. Um, I've been a, a quirky fan for a very long time. But I couldn't take up the opportunity because I was travelling the country with my family in our caravan. So uh, needless to say, that was not going to be an option. Um, I was lucky to bake a loaf of bread, <laughs> one loaf of bread, uh, let alone multiple things. So um, so it wasn't until we settled down here in Tasmania that um, I was able to revisit it. And it came at the perfect time because my catering business had just fallen over due to COVID. And I was looking at what I could do to... Um, get back into the food business side of things um, in a in a place where I didn't really know people. I didn't have an automatic setup network background. Um, so the fact that Primal Alternative sort of came with the whole package was really, really appealing to me. It kind of took the pressure off um, coming up with the I have a marketing background, dare I admit it. Um, so kind of knowing what goes into and what Helen has put into um, creating this brand, knowing that I I didn't really have the energy or the wherewithal or the funds or any of those sorts of things to start a food business for myself from scratch. So, um, and it kind of comes on the back of I've, I've most of the cooking and catering that I've done has been for specialty diets. Um, and I have done it for probably about 20 years. And there's been a lot of, uh, I'm glad I've got something to offer, but I'm kind of glad I don't have to eat that sort of food. So Primal Alternative has, has ticked all the boxes. Um, I love the products. They're fabulous. Um, and everywhere and anyone that has actually tried them. I work at a, a vineyard down here on the weekends and we do the most sensational local produce platters. And I looked at the gluten-free um, options and that uh, that were being served and I just sort of went, oh, we can do better than that. So my breads are now on the platters and we, consistently I am just told, oh, my God, this is the most amazing um, they just refer to it as gluten-free, gluten-free bread that I've ever had. So I can sort of walk around for the rest of the day, you know, with air under my heels and float through the room. Um, and it's consistent. Um, I'm I'm also able to, to stock the packet mixes and things um, out at the vineyard so that people who have tried the bread are able to, to take it because a lot of them are tourists. So the fresh product isn't really what they're looking for. It's either too heavy or they're not going to be here long enough but they, they're really happy to take home the packet mixes and we get to chat. The other advantage too is that we get people like uh, gluten-free vegans. They don't come through very often, but it's really hard to cater to those, generally speaking. So it's really nice to have options that you can can offer um, and, and they, they can enjoy. Um, so it's really put my boss's mind at rest to know that she can just call me and say, I've got this booking on the weekend, what have we got? Um, and I'm able to to come up with with a product for her. So, um, so I think everybody else has said just how fabulous the business is, and I I just I nod to that as well. Um, the fact that the whole package is there really is what what sold me. Um, the fact the branding is all done, all those nutritional panels, all of that compliance, all the wording, because you've got to be so careful with all the wording and and the way you present and the claims that you 
might accidentally make that you can't substantiate. All of that sort of stuff is such a minefield and um, H has done all of that hard work for us and I'm eternally grateful that I don't have to, to run that gauntlet. Um, the other part of the business that just sings to me is the women, is just the other prime listers. It's the most supportive environment I think I've ever been in. It's it's just I've had a disaster. What do I do? How do I fix this? What's happened? Has anybody else had this happen? And it's almost instant on the Facebook group. You just instantly get a response and advice or suggestions or commiserations or whatever is appropriate. Uh, sometimes it's all of them. Um, so it, it's just been amazing to have that network of people to to call on um, and just say, I need help or woohoo, I've done this. Isn't that fabulous? And have people celebrate your wins with you as well. Um, that's a really big thing. Um, so, yeah, I think if you're thinking about this business um, as a middle-aged woman kind of looking who's homeschooled her kids, and kind of has been out of the, the corporate environment for a really long time. The idea of kind of stepping into something and making this business um, happen, there's a lot of things that can feel really daunting about it. But H has just got that checklist. It's just everything that you need, it's, it's in there somewhere. Um, and if you can't find it, somebody will help you find it. And if you don't understand it, somebody will help you understand it. If you're struggling to in implement it, someone will advise and help you to implement it. It's just it's just one of those, um, it's not foolproof, but it's as close as you're going to get. Um, so, um, yeah, I think I could, I could wrap it on about so many aspects of this. Um, there's maybe some of you who I, I'm actually in a, in a rental and the kitchen's pretty crap. Uh, not as crap as Mel's though. <laughs> I've got to say that the door handles do stay on. Um, it's just, it's been, we've been able, had to modify and we've got wonderful landlords who have, who have allowed us to modify the kitchen so I can operate the business um, and it can work. It's just, um, you know, yeah, I have to be a little bit clever about how I, you know, process the the different things. If a, if a big order is coming through or there's lots of things to cool at one time, I have to be clever. But it's it's totally doable um, and there's been no resistance from the landlords or the real estate agent and no resistance from council. Um, they didn't seem to bat an eyelid about it. So um, it's it's all sort of been been able to work from from that aspect as well. So, yeah, awesome. all I can say is if you're thinking about it and go ahead, do it. Do it. Um that's really interesting. So on kitchens, you really only need 1.2 meters of bench space. Uh, I think I definitely had the crappiest kitchen out of everyone's kitchen because we were living in a shed before we turned this into a, like a house. <laughs> it's just a shed with a bit of extra building stuck on the front to make it look like a house, to be honest. But yeah, I had no room at all. 1.2 meters of bench space because really all you need is you just got your ingredients. You're just putting them into your mixer, mixing it, and then it goes into the oven. And then the best use of space is your dining table for cooling, packing. You know, you don't need all that. You don't need one of these gorgeous kitchens, you know. Um, so that's that's worth knowing because people do often think they need to move house or renovate kitchens and that you don't need to do that. So let's talk about the Prime Minister Mentor Program. So Prime Minister, just put your hand up if you've been through the Mentor Program. I know narrowly you have. Put your hand up narrowly. Yeah, you did. <laughs> <laughs> everyone, everyone. Mickey, you went through the – did you do Prime Minister Mentor Program? You did, right, because you were at the virtual open week last year. Right, yeah, nods. Good, 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 good. Does anyone want to talk about the Mentor Program and how having that – those group sessions and those kind of like tick-off points, like this is what we're doing this week, get this done this week, and then just that little, you know, like the the – we've heard that the big Prime Minister group is awesome, but there's, you know, sometimes you don't want to ask your newbie questions in there, right? Because, well, you feel a bit silly. So to have another separate group where it's just newbies, does anybody want to talk about that? Melissa? Yeah, I that that was in, integral in, in my launching of everything and anything really because to me I'm very much needing to be methodical I need to know that I've ticked that box I've jumped that hoop I haven't missed anything and I need to know that you know I'm not looking like an absolute idiot launching out because I've missed something 
you know what I mean? And to sit there and say, okay, well, this this week we're doing getting equipped. This week we're doing how to market. This week we're doing how to do this, how to do that, da 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 da. To me, to me, that was just so so much of a a breath of fresh air because when I was doing hairdressing, I literally was fumbling around the dark, going on a wing and a prayer. Mm. I knew hairdressing, but I didn't know anything about business. And setting it, and and due to that, one of my businesses failed. So I, I'm completely, completely relying on making sure the foundations are absolutely in place, and that covered everything. It was so to me, it was such a no brainer. Once I knew that was in place, and I knew that I had that support, and I knew that I under, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't written in highfalutin corporate language that I couldn't understand. It was all it was all very practical. Very, very practical. So yeah, totally. It, yeah, best best part of the spine of the business. You've got all your lovely you know, all your all your photographs covered, your sales marketing template you know, templates covered, all that sort of stuff. And knowing that you have your safety and, and guidelines and all that sort of stuff to refer to you haven't covered, so you haven't not covered anything. You, know, you haven't missed a thing, and it's great because you're walking into a cocoon of safety with the support that you need to get, you know, set up, and it's just, yeah, yeah totally fantastic. Brilliant. Thank you. I, I really do. I, I like the mentor program because you're doing it together and like you know you could like I just know from doing self-led courses you can join like you know I'm not nothing horrible is gonna happen after Sunday you know you can still still join join next next week week. um but uh you just like I just find when it's self-led you know you can be a little bit like oh yeah well I didn't get around to that today oh well you know I'll do it next week oh now I'm two weeks behind and it's kind of good to have those sort of um those sort of tick off points where and it's all very actionable easy the first week um first week or two is the the meatiest where you're doing the most boring paperwork stuff and then we get that boring stuff out the way and then we get into the exciting stuff so if you can do this round with the mentor program it's the best start you can give your business if you can't for one reason or another you know i always say um, there's no such thing as ready. There's only now. There's never going to be more time, never going to be more money next year. Just, you know, the amount of people I see who say, oh, I looked at this, you know, even Mel today saying, oh, I looked at this five or six years ago and oh, here I am now, you know. <laughs> like, and everyone always says they wish they joined earlier. So just be really um, interested in what's popping up in terms of time frame um, wise for you because it's just very interesting, isn't it, what we tell ourselves. But we, I will be back. I'll do this again. The mentor program is super powerful, but it won't be until March 2024, which is eight months away. A lot can happen in that time. So I've got some beaut questions from Kay Northern Rivers, um, who says, financial, oh, okay, so she says, a question wise, how do you go with selling outside stores direct to buyers? Is online a good market or is face-to-face still the best way to operate? And any tips for how to market the goodies to corner stores, et cetera? I'd love you to answer that one narrowly. No worries. Um, I I was quite nervous about approaching um, corner stores and stockists that um, – frightened me and so I kind of took a step back and I decided I'll go into um I'll set up a Facebook page I'll set up an Instagram page which um allowed me to sell uh the products from the comfort of my home and didn't have to eyeball anyone um and that grew into having more conversations with family and friends and then I, I thought, oh, I, I quite enjoy this. I'm going to try markets. And markets, I was my own boss. I was able to um, speak to people who were approaching me, who wanted to hear about it. And from all those experiences, I grew my confidence in being able to then go to stockists and say, hey, I've actually got a really great product here. And I think... I'm offering you a huge privilege in being able to sell this to to 
people who I know will want it. And so um, I needed to have that confidence in myself and in the products, but that grew so quickly. And from there, I thought, yep, I know what, I know that you guys need this in your shops. And so not everyone says yes, and that's fine. That's that's not a problem at all. But just being able to offer um, when I set up a, a meeting time to um, show show the shop what I have, I'll always, yes, good question, Christine. Yes, I'll always give um, samples because the samples just will always sell themselves. So I'll take in a few samples to um, for them to try. And it's not like a whole loaf. It's just like a, a couple of containers with just small little amounts. Um, I might do little mini biscuits uh, or the cookies that we do um, and definitely not everything. So I'm able to offer those. They can either eat it then and there which I prefer. I prefer to see their face and to discuss, oh, what did you think about that? But I could just leave it with them and they can um, give that a try. And then there's always the follow-up. Always, always need to follow up. How did you go? What did you think? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And like, I'm always banging on about, aren't I? Like the, the fortune's in the follow-up. Like the fortune is in the follow-up. And I love that, you know, we, we've we all, um, we've ironed out all the intricacies because I know the first time I did my first ever tasting because I'm like kind of a bit too generous sometimes. Like I took a full, I mean, luckily I only had five products then, but I took a full product of everything. And so, and then they were like, oh, they're a bit overwhelmed. Mm, this is a bit weird. <laughs> getting so much stuff and then they had to take it away and slice it and try it and then I had to go back what did you think whereas like now the way that we're doing it now like you take a sample and especially that the mini cookies they can taste the cookie right there and say yeah great here's your order this is this is incredible I want 10 of this 10 of this 10 of this so that's that's awesome so Thanks for sharing that. And, you know, we've got, we've got the brochures as well with all the answers to any questions that you'll get asked, but the confidence comes in the doing, you know, like, like narrowly said, and the, and the confidence comes quite quickly. And I can tell you, oh, I've got so much confidence in these products, you know, I've been hearing people rave about them for nine years. And even like, I hadn't had any of our fruit toast for about nine months for some reason. And I found some in the freezer. So it's been there for that long. And I was like, oh, I'm going to have that for breakfast. So I was like, this is delicious. <laughs> it's just like you keep like re-falling in love with um, with what you do, um, which is really cool. Anyway, enough about me. Uh, I'd love to speak to Mickey because I know, Mickey, you have got some awesome stockists in Sydney that put in – what what happened? Tell us a story where you put your first order in and then he like he rang back a week later or something or two days later or something. What was that story? Oh, I need to, you to unmute though. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So I don't really remember when it happened, but I just put a snippet, like literally two lines on uh, Facebook Marketplace. And this man replied to me saying, um, I really want your products in my cafe. No problem. His first order hit me with 50 loaves. And oh. he, he wants, yeah, 50 loaves and he wanted it within two days. Now I work, I'm here now. So I just, I was in a panic because I wasn't ready label wise. I wasn't ready ingredient wise. I had, because it was just like so random. And lucky for Erica, she helped me out in Summerhill, one of our other Plum Listers. I messaged her and I said, can you please help me out with some labels? So I ended up driving over to Summerhill and buying some labels of her just to get me out of this sticky situation. He is now ordering from me every week, and which is great. <laughs> but like I said, I can't keep up with him. Um, so like I said, I'll go from here to home and just start baking for him fantastic like you know it's a, it's a guaranteed income the other week at the markets I had samples all along my store and it was really really weird because um I had this family come and I mean I thought it was rude my son thought it was rude and her husband thought it was rude her and her daughter went through and ate everything off the table and he said to her in Greek what are you having lunch here or something 
And she said, oh, it's really good food. What are you talking about? Anyway, they end up buying one thing of granola, one thing of granola. All right, no worries. A week later, I got a, a message on my Instagram saying, I want to partner up with you doing business together. My alarm bells went off. I said, oh, my gosh, no. I said, if it's monetary, I'm scared. No, I can't do it. It's a scam. That's the first thing that came into my head. It turns out she has got a health clinic in which she wants to recommend my products to her clients. And she dropped off the brochures on Saturday. And, you know, she says, oh, this, 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 is this. So, you know, when I'm ready to open, I want this, 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 this. And I've got another stockist on my hand. <laughs> Just from taking everything off the table, just eating it. So, yeah, it can happen. It just happened in such a weird way. <laughs> I love that. Do I was I was going to say, oh, that's so yeah. annoying. I call those people elephants. You know, like they you know, like like an elephant yeah. just comes out and they just go. Oh. And they just see, they just you see all your stockings, and you know, they eat all your your samples. And normally those people don't buy, but that turned out good. <laughs> so that worked oh. out really good. But the funny thing was, I said to my boy, I said, I wish that somebody would just, I just really wish that would happen just in the markets. And I manifested it. It just happened. Yeah. Like, he goes, when did you really? I said, that's what, yeah, in my head, I just wanted that to happen. I've got the breads and all that, but I just want the packet mixes and the granolas to take off somewhere. There you go. There you I go. Know. I don't know how I attracted that aura. <laughs> but you put it out there and then, and then it came. I did. Yeah. amazing I love it I love it so um like I, Mickey's busy she this is obviously you can tell Mickey's energy she loves to be busy but you really can you know do this as often or as little as you want to there's no set days you have to work no set amounts you have to sell nobody's going to ask you how much did you sell are you hitting the targets nothing so it's your gig based on your energy and your you know, over the years that might ebb and flow, you know, so just, just bear that in mind as well. Now I'd love to go to Pip with some, um, if you've got any stories that you want to share about, um, marketing authentically, any business tips, any production tips, anything like that, that you have got. Oh, and narrowly, are you going to go? Oh, sorry. Oh, Oh. Sorry, I just need to run. Oh, you go. am I there? Yes, you're there. You go okay. and get in the classroom with all those kids after yeah. recess. <laughs> Lovely. <laughs> all right, then. Thank you. Thank you Bye. so much, Nerily. Bye. No worries. I've got to go too. <laughs> Are you going to see you, Mickey? Okay. Yep. Mwah. Bye. Mwah. Thank you. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> all right. Oh, you're over there now, okay. Pip. Go for it. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to say, can you just remind me what you asked me again? Oh, yeah. Uh, so just any, and, and this is like kind of final, just uh, we're going to speak to Pip and we'll speak to Melissa and then we'll wrap it up. But any final questions before we do, but I'm just going to ask Pip if she's got any tips about how to market herself authentically. I know you've been doing some banging things on Instagram. Uh, anything like is, like is that fundamental to business success or what are your thoughts on all of that, like 75 questions in one there. <laughs> Sorry. Um, I've actually, in terms of Instagram and Facebook, I think that's just going to be a personal thing. I found it's it's working for me um, just because I'm a relative newcomer to this area, so I don't have an extensive personal network. Um, so something like Instagram just gets me out there without me having to go door knocking. You know, I don't want to be be one of those people. Um, and I found initially, I just I just found women in business Facebook group and just let them know what I was doing. And I was inundated in that first week. It really surprised me from just that I'm here, just letting you know this is a new thing. I, you know, I wasn't even really certain how I should word it. Um, I just wanted to let people know I was out there. From that has come contacts with. Um, dietitians nutritionists those kinds of people who want to work hand in hand um so those who i think you know it there's certainly benefits to it but i don't if it's not where you're comfortable and it's not what you want to do um you know don't do what what you're comfortable with if you you know if you have a network then speak to them let them know work through that work to your strengths essentially um if you're um 
you know, if you have wherever you're working, a bit like Mickey, where she's working, it kind of works. So, you know, go in through those networks that you have, if you have friends that kind of need that. Um, and as I say, just kind of look at, look at um, things that sort of feel kind of obvious to you. It might be a little bit left of field, but just feel really obvious to you and just work out your approach to that. Um, like I said, I'm actually in a number of wineries. I mean, it's simply because I work at one um, and I was able to get the, the bread um, onto the platters there. From that, another restaurant came for lunch and they had a guest who was gluten-free and they just went, okay, I'll just have three of every packet mix. So that's gone into their to their um, front room um, and I'm actually doing another order for another vineyard who's doing uh, an afternoon tea, like a, a high tea, um, and they're needing to do it um, gluten-free. So, they've again, they've approached me as to what, how they might be able to, to work the menu that they've worked out, what products that I can offer. So, um, for me, that was just where I work. That was just a natural way in for me. So, and they all follow me on Instagram and they all sort of see how that's all going. Um, so I think just be your real self, just, you know, work with who you know, what you know. Um, and if you don't know something, it's not that hard to find out. Um, there is an awful lot of information that H offers and also the group. Um, so, you know, you can really find find that sort of stuff. Um, <clears throat> and it's also, I think, a bit of your own journey, not just talking necessarily just about the products. It's if you feel comfortable is just kind of going, um, this is what I'm doing and this is how I do it. This is what I had for breakfast. I mean, and that's that's Instagram, isn't it? Everybody's posting breakfast, lunch and dinner. So why not you saying this is what I'm using and it's fabulous and it's really versatile and I've made this, this, this and this out of, um, you know, buy the pack of the pancake mix and I've made donuts and I've made cake and I've made muffins and I've made waffles and all of, you know, so you can just kind of prove how versatile it is. Even things like doing um, blini with some smoked salmon, like make it fancy, do whatever, but just let people know that, yeah, that's what you're doing. It doesn't have to be um, influencer quality, you know, because we're, you know, that's not what we're aiming to do. We're, we're real people kind of doing um, a real job. Perfect. real food love it, love it. <laughs> real people real food real stories I love it and you know like we've got the influencer style professional pictures but people just kind of gloss over those ones now the ones that get the most interaction are the real ones and I know I was joking yesterday that you know yeah. the pictures I take of my food looks like some of the cat threw up but luckily within the primalistas there are people who take brilliant pictures and the great thing is that we all follow each other on facebook and instagram and we it's in the primalista license agreement that we can share each other's photos without having to say oh this one's by primalista ash i mean you can if you want to um but i use a lot of the pictures you know even like there's one that i've got running some ads at the moment with primalista chrissy up in uh, queensland that her market stall took of her it's a beautiful professional picture um, that we got tagged in and I saw it and that was great. And so using that. So there's lots of things to use. There's also all of the recipes and blog posts on the Primal Alternative blog that you can share as your recipe. You don't have to say, go to the Primal Alternative blog, but there's just so much content. But I think, you know, like social media uh, presence is really important if you are out of the town where you're producing but one of our most incredible points of difference is the fact that people can meet the maker. They can get to know you. You can be in the shop get, giving people tasters. And I think that's so much more powerful than any other paleo bread that's on the shelf in the, in the health food shop, you know? So there we go. Right. And a final question, unless there's any a final, final ones. I'm going to ask this one to Melissa. So um, Sally has yeah, asked, I sorry, you got, sorry, Pip, did I? Yes. Sorry, I just noticed the question that came up about how many hours. Oh, um, yes, that's the one I was just going to ask. Yeah, do you want to answer that doing, one? So, uh, well, I was just going to say it just sort of depends on how busy you want to be. Um, obviously, oh, no, it's not just my internet. You see, I thought it was mine. Oh, no, you're back. <laughs> Oh, you have to get you to unmute. No, sorry. 
meet me, blah, 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 blah. Mm-hmm. Uh, obviously, yeah, just depends on how busy you do want to be. You can have as many stockists and, and things or you can just say, actually, I need to contain it to this. I've got this much time um, and then just figure out how you want to work it. So um, I give myself two days a week um, so that in total I'm kind of working kind of four days, five days sometimes, um, incorporating my other job as well. Um, and then just sort of the, the marketing is kind of a bit incidental because, you know, you're needing to remind people to get your orders in. So those sort of things. But you can always have those um, pins. You can ha- just have a collection of posts that you put that you can just keep using. So initially you might have to spend a little bit of time working out your Instagram posts and things. But once you've got a bit of a collection, you can just keep reusing them. Uh, particularly for those kind of repetitive messages. Um, And then the baking, um, again, sort of depends on how big an order you've got. But, I mean, you can do an awful lot of baking in three or four hours, an awful lot of baking, and then you've got a bit of time, maybe an hour, hour and a half packaging up. So it just depends on on how busy you want to be, a bit like how long's a piece of string type of thing. So, Yeah. yeah. Yeah, perfect. That's a great answer. Thank you, Pip. And let's go to Mel. Um, Melissa, tell so you let's talk about specifically you got you do your market uh every Saturday. So tell us about how much Saturday, you do, yeah, Saturday. T- tell us about how much you bake for that. I know you always do your own sort of cake as well, which is like a grain free thing that you take. So tell us about that and how much um stuff you're producing and how long that takes you please i generally okay i I normally give myself two days i do thursdays and fridays so the the produce is actually the freshest it possibly can be for the sunday market um i will do the vegan loaves on the thursday um and, and cookie and then i'll do the egg loaves on friday um and any particular and any particular orders that to make sure that they are the freshest because I'll deliver Friday late Friday afternoon before the market. Um, if I'm going to top up any of my package and premixes and things like that of granolas, I will do those maybe once a month on a Wednesday. Um, so yeah, that's. But on the Thursdays and Fridays, I generally tend to be working maybe maybe about five hours a day. Um, to to get out, I end up by taking about about twenty four loaves, um, about twelve packets of biscuits, um, and whatever orders I happen to have that week. So that that will be my um, you know, um, basically what I cover in the, in those hours. So it's not it's not very invasive because I, I find if I if I separate the vegan loaves from the egg loaves, most of the time of the vegan loaves, um, and I get them all mixing up, they are soaking. They're soaking for an hour. You know, so I've got that time to be able to roll cookies, bake cookies, all that sort of stuff, to then go back and bake the loaves. So that to me sort of works for me on a Thursday, and then Friday all the egg loaves are really quick. And so I get that sort of done, plus I get my orders done. So it's sort of, it, that's my sort of flow and I sort of work really well with that. And as long as I've got my my ingredients, which I normally generally pick up on a Wednesday if I need to top up in anything, yeah, most of the time I'm doing sort of 10 to 15 hours a week, um, yeah, in business. So um, in, apart from the market and the market goes, as from eight o'clock in the morning to uh, one o'clock Saturday afternoon. That's pretty much the model, isn't it? The, like that's how I started it. The two yeah. two mornings baking a week or two half days baking a week and then a market and then I had some stockists as well and I baked pretty much about the same as you did and did some deliveries as well on the way to the market. So it's very very similar and then you know you could do it that scale you could do it like prime list of chicken where she just bakes one day every three weeks and does a thousand dollars of product um or you can be like mickey who sounds like she's baking every hour of the day um <laughs> which is great so it's, it's up to you which i love so we are on time oh my goodness exactly on the dot 
So is can there I, any final Can questions? I just mention one more thing? Yes, please. Sorry, can I just mention one more thing in regards to the Facebook, Instagram thing? Yes. Um, I've, I've actually found um, not only having a Facebook Marketplace ad, but also finding a gluten-free group within your area is really helpful. They tend to be the or a mums group within your area seems to be really helpful because it's those mums groups and those um, gluten-free groups that are going to be getting your word out really, really quickly. So uh, I find that they are the stalwart of my advertising marketing um, direction and campaigns. And all I do is, and, and the other thing is I've also found a small business group. So those three, every week I will do a post and I find that that's the places where they get shared the most. Brilliant. Brilliant advice. Yep. Excellent. And, you know, you can just set a, set a timer on your phone, a reminder that, you, you know, you yeah. go and po cross post across those groups if you want it. Or like, you know, Prime Minister Rosie, um, she was spending a lot of time making her Instagram just look schmick. And she said she didn't notice any difference in sales from it. And she found a lot more benefit from stockists and doing her market. So, you know, it's like, it, it's exactly what Pip said, you know, like do what, feels like the the path of least resistance or whatever is easiest for you if if you love just being on your phone and being creative and that's your bag then do it but if you're like oh my goodness what do I do it's not it's not make or break you know um which is a relief <laughs> a relief for Marlene as well because I know she doesn't really like doing social media <laughs> All right, then, my gorgeous, gorgeous people. I feel like we're all pals now, like you've all popped around for a cuppa. Do you want to stay for lunch? I'm just going to go and make some lunch. you got to go. Okay. Start driving over. It'll only take you about three days. All right. Well, thank you so much for joining me. And also the recordings are getting hundreds of views, which is so exciting. So hello, you recording viewers. And I hopefully will see you all on Friday for the Bake Along um so yeah get your ingredients bought uh, the herbs and the linseeds are optional so but make sure you've got your eggs your zucchini your almond meal your tapioca starch go and order those now or oh, apple cider vinegar as well and bicarb and we'll be in the primal alternative headquarter kitchen <laughs> i don't do much baking these days can you come and do it for me instead pip <laughs> Should get Prime Minister Amy over. She's more of a pro than me. All right. Thank you so much for being here. And I'll see you on Friday. Thank you. Thank you.